Welcome everyone. Um, we have a very special guest in our uh, Invisible Architecture series today. And his name is, get it up here. Is it, is it pronounced Werner, Werner Brandmeier? Yeah, that's good. Very good. Okay. I was going to, I forgot I was going to ask you earlier. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I always have just heard your first name. So Werner Brandmeier is a researcher of subtle earth energy fields and a gifted diviner from a family of herbalists and dowsers. Born in Austria, Werner moved to the U.S. in 1999 and funded the Institute of Feng Shui and Geopathology. After years of applying European knowledge of geopathic stress for his clients, he realized that draining energy fields not only affect people's health, it also affects their spiritual potential. He developed a line of energetic tools to protect personal energy fields, harmonize homes and business, and accelerate the ability to connect our light body. He holds an engineering degree and worked in the high-tech medical field for more than a a decade. And he's got his website is www.geopathology.com. G-E-O-P-A-T-H-O-L-O-G-Y. And geopathology is going to be the topic today. So welcome, Warner. It's really great to see you. Hi, Karen. Nice to be on your, on your talk here. So uh, we're really looking forward to this because this is such a, this just, this subject just gets bigger and bigger as the, as the 5G and uh, besides everything else, it's everything they're doing, right? It does, it does. And I remember back, you know, I came in 1999 to the US. Uh -huh. I was down at the Orlando uh, show like in 2001. Right. Because I saw Elliot talking about that, and you were you were down there, and yeah, a uh -huh. lot of other people. Yeah, we so. were going back how when when we did uh, we did the international feng shui ones, you know that that Roger Green put yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like all of those. So so we've I, seen each other on and off through the years. <laughs> right, right. I, I started and, with Roger Green in my early years. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, he was in Austria. Yeah, and we traveled to Europe and. We had a big conference in Innsbruck at the time around as well, where a lot of international people were there. Raymond Lowe, I studied with oh, Raymond. Yeah, Lowe. I went to um, the the one in Budapest, and then yeah. we went to Romania. Yeah, it was really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so let's begin on this geopathology. Why don't you give it a definition first? So, <laughs> so the whole idea of geopathology is that it brings in a European component into the feng shui world, right? Feng shui is about the energy of your environment, of your living space. Uh, and, you know, the Chinese obviously had a big uh, part of that, but the Europeans and other nations had their own traditions and the, of geomancy, the English and the French and the Germans, right? The, the Germans very particularly were focusing on um, uh, fields and, and grids and uh, areas where your chi gets drained. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what the official title for that is geopathology or geopathic stress. Mm -hmm. you know, pathology, obviously the study of, uh, of sickness, mm -hmm. of illness, geo like in geography, the earth. So what makes you sick out of the earth? And the idea is if we know where these grid lines or areas are, then we try to stay away from them, right? Mm -hmm. Also, they do have a very uh, important part in nature to play, and also that it's not there to just, uh, you know, bother us. <laughs> I remember, I remember being at a dowsing conference, and there was the, the guy. He was the president of the American Dowsers, and he was uh, had big fruit orchards, and yeah. so he ran them down the paths, the the grid yeah. lines, you know, yeah. so so you can really utilize them, and the bees yeah. loved them, yeah 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 exactly that's what that's what you want to do because a lot of plants a lot of uh, animals in in nature either like it or dislike it stay away from it so in all the times people were more used to observe nature and um and you know take those hints you know in, in a lot of bigger animals like farm animals like horses and cows and sheep and pigs 
they all avoid those lines you know and and in old times people were watching you know where would a, a flock of sheep lie down on a property you know because that was a good spot this is where i want to build my house mm -hmm. just in modern uh, uh, times, you get a little parcel, you know, where you can squeeze your house in and there is no choice of moving it to one or the other side. Even though the termites are there. <laughs> yeah, or, or the termites, right? So so insects are another interesting uh, uh, pointer towards geopathic stress. So insects often like geopathic stress, mm -hmm. like ants. If you have a big ant hill or if you have an ant problem in your house, always you know in one corner of the house it's most likely that there is a big geopathic line coming into your house from this from this side i experienced this over my 20 plus years as a consultant now mm -hmm. um in america here so many times you know so so very typically most bigger animals avoid that and with them uh dogs right dogs mm -hmm. avoid them the mm -hmm. only bigger animal which is attracted to geopathic stress, do you know? The cat. Is the cat, exactly. <laughs> so, and that's well known among the Dowsers, right? Cats, mm -hmm. what they call them in, in German, they call them radiation seekers. So mm -hmm. they, they look for this radiation, they like it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they obviously are not affected by it. So they lick it off their, their fur or however they clear themselves off but they show us the places in the house where geopathic stress might be. So you if know, the cat loves your bed. Yeah. Bed. I remembered at one dowsing conference in Vermont, this doctor was there from Poland and she ran a big uh, cancer clinic and she yeah. would bring the, she had all cats because she found that when they go on the people, they tend to absorb the cancer. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, there are there are kind of strange stories on that. Well, I, I, I don't know if we want to go there. But, <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, it just reminded me of that. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, let's just leave it there. But yeah, they used in in old German medicine, they used uh, blankets of of cats, of real cats uh, as a shield for arthritis. You really? know, arthritis is is a typical effect on top of um, of uh, underground running water mm. okay so underground running water and and arthritis very closely go together and so and so um you know they thought when they put cat fur around your fingers or your hands wherever the arthritis is that they can protect you wow. you know which is interesting because it's uh you know, official medical uh, research they did, you know, mm -hmm. like 20 years ago. So I, I've, I hope I've, there's not a run on cat, cat no, life. No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> no. Nowadays, I don't think you can no. buy those anymore, but, it, it, but, but 20 years ago, you could. Hmm. So, so that was, or um, any smaller insects like ladybugs or, um, uh, wasp nests, you know, in under your roof on, on some side. These are typical uh, uh, signs that there is ge a geopathic stress issue in the house. I had a I had a client from India who called me, mm -hmm. right? And he never I've never met him. He found my websites, uh, and um, and he said he had this storage space for his clothes, you know. And there were windows, and in the windows. There were all these wasp nests and he wanted a solution for that and we put uh one of our shields up there the, the house harmonizer which um you know creates a, a a geopathic free zone in your entire house several mm -hmm. several levels uh and um and it was gone so he sent other people you know a year later somebody else called me and i heard that his problem was obviously mm -hmm resolved so he was happy with that so so let me just go back to the idea you know what geopathic stress in nature is there for mm -hmm. because there is a purpose for it geopathic stress when you look at the yin and yang symbol you know everybody thinks when you go in the cycle of yin and yang you always want more chi more chi right in spring the chi grows expands very quickly in summer everything blossoms mm -hmm. and then it fall it gets retracted again and in winter 
it, it's quiet and waiting for the next cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and everybody wants more chi in the house. <laughs> But that's not really possible, right? You have to go through the cycle. So there is a part of expansion and there is a part of contraction. Mm -hmm. And what geopathic stress does, it feeds the second part of the, of the, of, of the cycle where everything gets uh, uh, into the, the degradation, right? In fall, the leaves fall down and then they rot. Mm -hmm. And out of the, of the particles of the dust to dust situation, mm -hmm. the new seed comes and sprouts in spring and the new life comes out mm -hmm. but there needs to be a part of degradation and so when you put geopathic stress uh for example in your garden where you have a compost pile the compost pile works twice as well mm -hmm. because everything the bacteria grows much further bacteria uh, mm -hmm. and, and parasites they love geopathic stress like the ants do because the ants clean up you know the space right and so when we now sleep and in an area where there's rotting energy enhanced, right? Mm -hmm. have like faster rotting, which means faster aging. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. That leads to illness. And, and so we want to stay away from that. Right. That, but, but it's so interesting about um, the compost. Yeah. You know, about yeah. using it, like how you, yeah. how you can yeah. use it beneficially. Yeah if you use it the right space but we also we need to understand that not everything in nature um you know is necessarily healthy like there are toxic you know mushrooms and whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> so there are, there are you know we just have to stay away from those and focus on the other ones mm -hmm. so, so that's the same thing and in older times people when they you know looked at nature observed the animal world they were more in tune with nature as they are today today you know they just get sick and then and then they wonder why they suddenly get sick because when you get older your your natural strength of youth you know your immune system everything goes down and 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 you don't have the energy anymore uh, as you had when, with a young boy i always think of health is a bit of an energetic bank account Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're born, you're born with a bag full of money, you know, and, and in, in homeopathy, they call this a constitution. Some people have a strong, a mm -hmm. stronger constitution and others not, you know, and, and when you do crazy things, when you're young, you uh, party through the night, you know, and you can take a cold shower in the morning, go to work. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you turn 40, you can't do this anymore. It's not. It's not working. You're because, using up that bank account. <laughs> because your bank account getting emptier and emptier. And mm -hmm. suddenly you have allergies. Mm -hmm. You never had allergies in your whole life. Now suddenly you you know you you kind of really you have to be really careful what you do because your account is empty. And then when it goes under, what you do is you go to the doctor and ask him, you know, I'm so I don't know what my shoulder hurts and my blood pressure is up. Doctor says, mm -hmm. Don't worry. Take this credit card and keep <laughs> on living your life, right? <laughs> and at some point, there is no more credit, and and then you are in trouble, right? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. then you're bankrupt. Your account is suddenly bankrupt. And right. so, what we do is with the good exercises we do and with the good practices we do. You know, we we try to keep the stress down. We go on va a vacation, maybe we we meditate every day. We eat well. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all deposits in our bank account, but then we have a big hamburger and we have a glass of wine and we smoke maybe on the side a little bit. And these are all uh, uh, withdrawals from our account. And as long as the deposits are bigger than the withdrawals, right. we're fine having a big steak once in a while, right? Mm -hmm. But if we only have steaks and McDonald's all day long, uh, right. most likely we always take more money out. Mm -hmm. and and that's not reasonable for the long term. And this is what drives the ship down. Mm -hmm. So what the Germans did is, and, and this is a tradition there, which is 100 years old now, is they, in the early 1900s, they investigated cancer, right? And figured out that there is a, a an environmental component. Dowsing was very popular at the beginning of the 1900s. I have pictures where there are dowsing competitions in, in Paris. Mm. women with fancy hats <laughs> walk around and try to find 
Ah. I didn't somebody dug in the ground and with dowsing rods, right? Mm -hmm. so, so somebody had the idea, maybe we should check the spots where somebody get, is really sick. And it's not just cancer. You know, we know there's a lot of chronic illnesses and, and, and as I said, arthritis and migraines and, and, and uh, autism, for example. Like mm -hmm. anything chronic and, and, and long term very often has uh, the issue that that the 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 chi of a person is constantly drained okay. you know so mm -hmm. so the 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 early experiments were in a little town called Wilsbyburg, a, a famous dowser um uh, freiherr from pole uh, did an experiment in a little town i, I when i uh, uh, go back to austria and i usually fly into munich because it's closer to this part of austria I drive by Wilsbyburg, by this little town, you know, uh -huh. before my way home to Austria. Uh, and um, and so he doused an entire little town for, for a week. It took him a week. Uh, and they they put up an experiment. So they gave him a policeman from the neighbor town, which uh -huh. would observe him. So he wouldn't talk to people and get information on the side. But, uh -huh. you know, he would also not be local. So, so uh, I took him a week and then he made these big drawings of the whole town. And then the, uh, the mayor of the town who led the experiment brought in the doctor and said, please doctor, uh, bring me the cancer cases of the last 15 years. And there were like some 43 cases and every case was on one of these major geopathic. Wow. Yeah. And, and so this is, was the first time that they said, oh, there must be a connection. There must be a connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know in, in i don't know how it is today because i'm away for 20 years you know and there's a new generation of kids mm -hmm. grown up but when i grew up and you had cancer you knew that of course you go to the doctor but then you bring a dowser in to check your house because something is wrong with your house mm -hmm. and if you don't fix that you know all the other work you do is is um, not really bringing results that's what my place here is and why i founded the institute of feng shui and geopathology here when we came to america my wife uh, was diagnosed with cancer out of mm. the blue, out of nowhere and i thought oh you know and and you know i know about that what, what can we do to help uh, you know aside of the medical part and I realized that nobody in America was aware of that at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. so this is why I got a website like geopathology.com. I mean, you couldn't get this today anymore, right? Right. But, but because well, nobody for about a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody knew about that. And uh, and but it's it's a really important part. And if we just look at that, it's like when we bring chi into a a situation, it's like putting water in a bowl, right? Mm -hmm. And so we always try to put more water in, more water and more chi into the house. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there are cracks in the pot, right? And, you know, the water seeps out overnight. We did something really healthy. We go to bed, we wake up the next day, look at our water bowl and it's empty. And we say, how is that possible? I did all this good stuff yesterday. Because these cracks, this is what geopathic stress does. It's it's not known. It's It's practically in a blind spot mm -hmm. and and the energy seeps out there and then there is nothing else to use the next day mm -hmm. and this is why this is so important for anybody who works with energy uh you know like like energy uh um uh therapy of of any kind because the good stuff you do should hold and should right. build up mm -hmm. and once you you close the the cracks and and you seal those off then it builds up every time you do something good you know you, mm -hmm. you build up that is the really um idea behind there and why i think it's it's support for so many other disciplines mm -hmm. uh, and good stuff people do even in feng shui right right you know you have so many different schools in feng shui right, right? Mm -hmm. and the idea is that you overlay them right you you, exactly. you have baguas and different baguas you have the uh, the three door bagua, you know, the modern version from the entrance, and then you have the traditional bagua, which go with goes with the compass directions, and you know we could discuss all those things. But then you have uh, the flying stars, and you have the best sleeping directions, and 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 so many other systems. 
And I found when I do it now, I, I use like at least four different schools and it's like a sandwich and you come with it all together. You know? Exactly. But but this is where the, 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 the German and the engineering aspect came in, you mm -hmm. know, in, in the people in, in, in Germany, Austria, the German thinking people, you know, with the feng shui is how can we measure the, right. the difference in energy we bring into the house? Because, mm -hmm. you know, if we put, let's say, you know, there are the typical feng shui cues, you put bamboo flutes for, for ceiling beams in, right? Mm -hmm. Or for or for slanted roof lines in, in your bedroom, maybe up there. Mm -hmm. So if you can measure the difference before and after, you find out, is it 5% better or is it 20% better? Right. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so you can check different methods you do. So this is where dowsing comes in, mm -hmm. because dowsing is a method where you can measure energy right you know and and this is why you know a lot of the feng shui people uh have dowsing uh, experience as well or, or, mm -hmm. or started dowsing to to get better in their estimation of chi mm -hmm. you know of their measures in feng shui mm -hmm. because i tell you something right um you know i i <laughs> i've been to houses of of fanatic uh, five uh, uh, um, flying stars proponents, right? Mm -hmm. Who did everything right in flying stars, and and then it gets so complicated because every year, you know, the the changes, the measures to the front door, and mm -hmm. then every month it changes. And, and so, <laughs> so I was in a house. The husband slept in the living room. In, everybody slept in sleeping bags all over the house because <laughs> the bedroom. Had a number five in there, and they were sleeping somewhere else, and they still didn't sleep well, and this and that, and and then what I realized was that one method you can do with dowsing is to find out how much of a hundred percent. If you look at a pizza, right, mm -hmm. you have a hundred percent is the whole pizza. Mm -hmm. You know how many, uh, how much influence have in this situation and this changes you know from mm -hmm. if you live in a city or if you live in the countryside there is more exposure to natural compass direction than you live in new york right or right. somewhere mm -hmm. so it changes everywhere but how much influence does the, the bagua have or the three door bagua have in this situation or the flying stars have mm -hmm. and what you find is it's just a small segment right mm -hmm. and you have 15 percent here and 20 percent from that and 10 percent from that but if you look at the chi, you know, if you want to say so, the form school chi, the quality of the chi, mm -hmm. you know, how the chi flows and what the quality is, meaning if there is geopathic stress there, the chi is ruined, right? Mm -hmm. So how much is that? It's at least, at least half of the pizza, at least, mm -hmm. you know? And so all you can do is you never get a perfect feng shui situation with everything is perfect okay. or very rarely, right? So you need to go for the big chunks first. And if you get one or two big chunks first and you get 70, 80 percent, you right. already win, right? And then you do the fine tune and you maybe if you have a choice, you let the person sleep in their better sleeping direction. But mm -hmm. if the better sleeping direction is on top of a geopathic stress cross, right. uh, you, know, you don't even think of going there because right. it you always have to compensate. Yeah, it doesn't do you any good. But I, you know what, that's one thing I, I just thought of this, I forgot, like, but when I look at a place, you know, because you always look at the outside first, it's like looking at the trees, you know, if they're bending, if, right. they, if they have those big cancerous, you know, right. bulbs on them. I mean, it's like you could get a whole thing and then cracks in the sidewalk and there's, there's a lot of information you just kind of see, you know. I I do have uh, I do have a lot of pictures like that you know of trees we we had trees here on a very famous ocean boulevard and the trees were all like cancerous looking in German they call those cancer trees right mm -hmm. a lot of the Americans thought oh these are fancy trees and then I have pictures where you see another tree of the same kind in the background and it's totally straight and in front mm -hmm. is this with his knobs on there right with his tumors on there right and then we came in um, years later, we drove by when we drove home uh, and the garden department was there and cut down the tree. And so you could see inside the tree was hollow, right? And it was dead oh. inside. 
and this is why they cut it down because yeah. whenever you have a an ocean cove a lot of water runs down from the land into the ocean right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know it's more likely that there is a water stream under you and water streams are one of the causes for geopathic stress mm -hmm. right so no, so, but but there are trees and there are trees which like uh, this type uh -huh. of wet energy, right? For example, oak trees. Mm -hmm. So when I get uh, called to a consultation and it's um, it's on Oak Street, for example, I <laughs> already had this. I never thought of that. Yeah. Right. So Oak Street maybe was called that because there were a lot of oak trees there, right. and oak trees grow on wetland. Okay, so it's more likely that there is underground wet you know water streaming there mm -hmm. you know, this is why you don't stand under a, an oak tree with a lightning right because the lightning hits the tree more likely because it's connected to water the lightning likes to ground itself in water right mm -hmm. uh, and other trees so in german we have those sayings right like avoid uh, eichen sollst du weichen buchen sollst du suchen so you should avoid oak trees but you should look for beech trees beech ah. trees uh -huh. grow on dry land you know or, mm -hmm. um so, so you know there are these all these old uh sayings in 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 folk uh knowledge and in... so much of it's such wisdom i mean i keep finding you know and right. then you do some research on it wow it's like amazing yeah there is a reason behind yes yeah, exactly. always yeah 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 so so there are uh three types of causes for geopathic stress right mm -hmm. and and uh uh, the, the first one is underground running water, so wa water veins, they call them, you know, what you, what a dowser looks for when you put a well in, right. you know, to hit one of those strong, good water veins. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy to to have your bed on top there. Or, you know, you, anything which you spend more than half an hour a day. Mm -hmm. okay, it can be your, your favorite TV chair if you sit there for several hours, or your workplace, of course uh or or the bed because we spend eight hours in bed every day right so mm -hmm. what, what happens is that the first signal you can feel is that you don't feel rested in the morning when you wake up or you don't sleep well mm -hmm. you don't you know, it's difficult to fall asleep you wake up several times the the strongest signal is if you wake up at three in the morning okay and this is because geopathic stress is not the same intensity all day long uh it it is a bit like a sine wave and the strongest the tip of this intensity wave is between two and three in the morning mm, and so yeah. you know and often when i come to a consultation and at least one of the couple there says oh you know my husband wakes up every night at three or, or half past two right. or, or the other way around that is already a very strong sign that something is not is not good, is not wrong. Mm -hmm. Underground running water. Uh, the second one is fault lines. You know, any cracks in the ground, mm -hmm. very much more in California, for example, than here on the East Coast. Um, you know, that happens all the time. When, when I do a, a distant consult with somebody, I always want them to send me some pictures from the outside of the house and then right. a floor plan. Exactly. Uh, and and I often see already, oh, they're in a in a valley down to the ocean, maybe, and it's 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 a cracks so you can see every mm. everywhere. You know? mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so fault lines, you know, uh, and the third one is uh, grid systems, regular grid systems, and a lot of those grids have German names because they were researched by German medical doctors like the Hartmann grid. Dr. Ernst Hartmann mm -hmm. was a medical doctor who did a lot of cancer research. Or the, the Curry grid, Man, uh, Manfred Curry was an American who lived in Germany in ah. the 50s. Uh, um, or the, the banker grid, Anton Banker was a dowser in, in Bavaria. Uh, and that is the grid which which we look most for that is a, a 30 by 30 foot grid so 10 by it's in german it's also called a 10 meter system mm -hmm. and, uh, 30 by 30 feet and this is the size of a house is 40 feet 50 you know whatever so you have this somewhere in your house mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so if it's in in the kitchen and you sit on the table and have breakfast there for 20 minutes in the morning and then you know that's okay because the body 
you know, compensates with that. Right. But if you sit there on your TV chair, as I said, or sleep in your bed for so and so many hours, uh, it just takes out, it takes out energy of your system. Mm hmm. So, so what we use to find those, because there are no instruments there, obviously they're not subtle enough, the, the electronic instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, we use dowsing instruments, and my favorite tool is this, it's called the bauba, right? Or it, mm -hmm. the I got it right there. <laughs> a tensor, uh, so it bobs up, up and down or sideways, or it does mm -hmm. all kinds of things. But it's... Um, it's not magic in any way. It's uh, just a, an amplifier. So what the right. dowser feels very subtle in the hand, like a micro movement, because mm -hmm. something long and something heavy at the end, you know, small yeah. movement it really here, accentuates it. it. Yeah, it's really the same than a pendulum. Pendulum is just vertical, right? A right. thread and something here, mm -hmm. and you have the same thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, my father was a dowser when I grew up. Uh, he doused for everybody for their wells and. I walked around with him as a little kid, and he used uh, tree branches, right, mm -hmm. from, from bushes, uh, uh, some hazelnut bushes or something, and these are called wire rods. So mm -hmm. you, you get a, like a, a splitting piece, and then you hold them in your hand, and they start to twist around. And you, as much as you try to hold it down, you cannot hold this as soon as you walk over water. The water mm -hmm. thing, it starts to twist. You have to be careful not to be hit by it. I grew up in northern Wisconsin and then out in the country by a lake. So everybody had, you know, had a dowser come in with the, because they had their own wells. And it was just amazing, you know. Right, right. How accurate so, it was. Yeah, yeah. So, so water dowsing is the most uh, popular form of dowsing, right? So mm -hmm. water dowsing is is pretty well known everywhere but when it gets into these grids and so then you know it uh uh it, it's getting a little weak the, the information i've been in different different programs different and there's like you know different consensus what's what and you know what i mean it's uh, now yeah they they all talk now a little bit about geopathic stress but mm -hmm. you know there there is not not very deep uh, information about it. You know, and, I always loved that book by Kathy Bockler. Yeah, about, like, about, the, yeah. about the school kids. Can you talk on that a little bit? I always thought that was so interesting. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so I brought all kind of. You know, the, this is the old guy, the Gustav Freier from Paul, right? So, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. it's in German. Uh, and but but this uh, Kate Bachler was an um, a, a nun in Austria. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is a translation of her book, and there is another book out there, more recent one, because this you can't buy anymore. I think you can buy this. Oh, this I, I have that old one. It's maybe worth something now. A reprint <laughs> uh, of, of another dowser who pretty much printed the whole book back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what she did is she did experiments in Salzburg. You know, you might have heard of Salzburg in Austria, mm -hmm. the, the Sound of Silence thing. Right. Right. Movie. Uh, so, so it was like over the whole uh, district, like um, 25 physicians, 3,000 children took part in this study. Uh, and they, they found that a lot of kids who, who can't sit still in class, right? What, today you would call those ADD and ADHD. And mm -hmm. those, at the time, they didn't have a term for that. Uh, or bedwetting at home, right? And so what they did is they checked out the classrooms and they checked out the homes, the beds at home specifically. And when they changed those, the behavior and, and the focus of the kids in school, everything everything changed. So, you know, when we went to, uh, to got to school, like many years ago, yeah. what, this happened, you picked the spot the first day of school, and this is where you were sitting all school year long right, right? and it's so, still that way <laughs> no 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 nowadays what they do is and my kids here in america they they rotate them around every few weeks you you go to a different table in in the classroom i went to the to the class of of my girl when she was in elementary school right and i explained to the teacher and so i i checked out those the classroom Mm -hmm. and so and so then we marked the 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 lines the, you know especially this big line there right. in the classroom 
and she moved around the table so to get them off uh and then a day later all the marks were taken off the you know we, we taped them on the ground because the 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 janitor had thought we you know cleaned up and, but you know uh, i i've been teaching at lausd and believe me you go into the room that's your seat they don't move yeah. around now, yeah, but I mean, they move between classes but in each individual class you have a designated seat but, and usually you're it's your alphabetical so they'll remember your name uh, yeah maybe but but see but then it's not even your fault that you fall asleep no at i know o'clock in the afternoon because you can't keep your energy up right you know it, it, it's interesting when i do a class somewhere and then uh -huh. in the middle of the class i start to douse and show them where the lines are and and then we just we just look at the people where people you know get yeah. like difficulty mm -hmm. keeping keeping uh, the attention up uh, and they are sitting on the line you know so um i know so this this there's is so much happened. there's so much that they could be incorporating in the school not sitting on that line and not under a fluorescent light <laughs> so this is another part a modern part of this type of energy now is the whole emfs right mm -hmm. and and people um you know now are scared of 5g and and and, and all that, but 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 they have so many electronics in the house uh, emfs for the for the cellular uh, uh for, for the cells themselves on the cellular level have a very similar reaction than geopathic stress because what happens is are you familiar with with blood ph yeah you, yeah you know? No, because so, I, so, I, I think you can even do a house, whether it's acidic or alkaline. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, but but my point is that geopathic stress makes you acidic. Oh. Okay. And so this is why uh, 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 bacteria grows, you know, and and, uh, and 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 yeast grows in the body, right? Because uh -huh. they love uh, acidic uh, environment. Like when you look at the at the at the, at the blood. You know, seven is neutral. The low numbers are acidic. Right. The high numbers are alkaline. Um, uh, the the blood, the ideal blood, should be between seven point three and seven point four, mm -hmm. right? So a little bit on the alkaline side. So when this goes down just a little bit at seven point one or seven point two, you are in the emergency room. You know, they try mm -hmm. to save your life. So you cannot. Yeah, there, there's a very narrow range right. uh, you have to to stay healthy. Right. So now when you sleep on geopathic stress, because that's what happens in your compost uh, mm -hmm. pile. Right. So so everything uh, grows like in terms of degrading, you know, mm -hmm. the food or whatever you throw in there. The yeah. same thing happens to your body and your body turns acidic and and you get sick. I mean, it's so simple and so logic, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no complicated. Mm -hmm. right? So, so yeah, so, so it makes your house acidic and, and then you not just have the physical level, really, you know, you can say, oh, you know, there's an emotional acidity, you know, and how does this, what's an emotional acidity, like anger, resentment, mm -hmm. right? All those negative right. emotions right. because people are just angry and fed up and not happy, like happy and joy will be on on the alkaline side, more on the balanced side, definitely, mm -hmm. right? So, so it's all the same information, just on different layers and different levels. Uh, and um, yeah, and and I mean, I have so many stories of the, what what I like um, a lot is, uh, for example, the response of animals mm -hmm. and the response of babies. Right, because they don't know. Some people think, "Oh, when we put your shield up, we need to know anything." No, you don't. You know, when mm -hmm. we put a shield up, the ants move out of the house. Wow, I, numerous cases like that, mm -hmm. and it's not made as an ant shield. It's mm -hmm. just it's love, geopathic stress. Right. You know, and this is why when you have cracks in 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 the asphalt on a on a road, very often these cracks go along geopathic lines. And then when you look in the cracks, the ants are crawling back and forth. I have one going um, like a south one that goes through diagonally my, my living room. So I can see, I go out, the, the stairs are cracked. Then I walk across the street 
the the and when you're walking up to the sidewalk is cracked and then the bushes over there the the bush right. in the middle is dead right it's dead it's always dead and you put yeah. a plant a new one in and it's always yellow exactly and it's yeah mm -hmm. typical you know that, that's the plant reaction but that means that you have a line you even know where the line is in your house right well i'm never on that line so i, I find it so fast and you know it just kind of goes through a non place yeah, I, no. I, I, I don't sit there at all or that, that, is, that, that, that is good but but what you see with babies is you, they sleep through the night so a baby doesn't have much choice right, right. so what happens is when babies roll out of their bed you sometimes see that right so mm -hmm. that a baby rolls on one side every time the parents come in the baby is on one edge of the corner i have a, a nice picture which i found on the internet where a baby is on the floor with one leg on the bed right <laughs> and 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 the interesting part is on the picture is that there is a blanket under the baby on the floor mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. which tells me that this happens every night so the parents put already the blanket oh, my. oh god <laughs> and, and, and so, then i mean there's always the move the crib bit <laughs> and, and so and so and so you know already that this happens again and again and the baby still has this instinct like an animal to move away from that yeah when you grow older you know up maybe five six seven years on you don't move anymore. You just stay there and take this in and you charge up with this geopathic stress be, be, because, uh, you know, you, you, you just carry this around with you. And when you do grounding or you work, uh, you walk barefoot on the ground or you, you swim in, in a lake or in the ocean, uh, you discharge this energy, mm -hmm. but it takes a number of days to discharge mm -hmm. uh, and it only takes a few hours to charge up. So, mm -hmm. so even if you discharge, but every night you go back to your bed and you charge up again, you just keep this charge level up. And this is how we can even find this with dowsing tools. You can check on a person if he sleeps at home on geopathic stress because you test the, the, the charge on the person. Right. So, that, mm -hmm. right? so but with a baby, the, the moment you put, you put the, the shield up, the baby sleeps through the night, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I have, you know, cases after cases like that. They immediately, they, they have a very quick turnover, you know. So they don't hold these energies that long. They pick them up quick. They let them go quick. Mm -hmm. so, no, I find also, you know, with a lot of babies where they're down in a corner, it's because they're near the electrical box that's on the other side that no one pays any attention. And the baby's just trying to get away from it, but, yeah, it's, but it's on the other side of the wall. Nobody thinks about it. Yeah, but that's, I just said, EMFs is the same type of energy. That exactly, the, yeah. The geopathic is natural, the EMF is man-made. Right. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so you need to, when you look at a house, you need to look at both. Right. right. Mm -hmm. and, and you need to look at your electronics because uh, you know, now you send your kid to school and all the kids have a laptop or, or, or a right. tablet or something. Everybody, and not just theirs, but all the kids around in class have another one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're connecting with Wi-Fi and, and the kids grow up in this, uh, in this field and then they're all hyper, you know, and, and are on medications because they can't sit still. Mm -hmm. You know, no wonder. And no. they all have a cell phone in their lap. Yeah. So when you look out at a class and everyone's looking in their lap, you know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's yeah. Like, so you need to, and, and so this is where, uh, you know, the, the other part of the German thinking comes in. And maybe my engineering background is that once we learned about those things is the next question is, what do we do when right. we have a situation like this? So the easier way for geopathic stress, so the natural ways to move your bed on a different wall in the in the bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. Get it away from the geopathic line or water line or whatever is under there. However, now we collide a little bit with our feng shui knowledge, right? Because in feng shui, you also have an idea where you want to put the bed in the bedroom, right? In a good supported way, you can see, you know, the windows and the door like the, the 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 sitting in an armchair rule you know basic I find you have to be very flexible this isn't like old china 
<laughs> um, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Stuff, yes, you know? yes, and no. But the principles, the principles are there. When you no, have your yes, exactly. next to the door on the side, it just does not feel as calm exactly. and as well no. as on the other side. So we, you need a solution to to fix the house, you know, and you need to a solution maybe to fix yourself when you walk around. And mm -hmm. so this is where it came in, you know, that we develop those shields for a person or for the house or for a cell phone or for you know whatever whatever so so that's a big part of my work and i have uh clients all over the world who, who use my stuff for those reasons yeah that's so great well you know what we're coming up on time so this was a great it went so fast i might have to have you back for a second one in a month or two because it, it was really interesting i mean so you um, together so much stuff we yeah. can go in so many different directions, even with the whole EMF 5G. Yeah, I would love I would love to come back and like focus on on that too. So uh, thank you, Werner. This was great. And the people are, I mean, this is one where there was so much different kinds of information and it all came together, you know. Yeah, no, it, it was a pleasure. And uh yeah. And um, you can see him at uh, so it's geo, geopathology.com, right? Geopathology.com. I have a few other websites, but you know they're linked from there. So just yeah, I went there, and you can it has the others linked. So it, yeah, it spreads it. out in all directions because you know once you do this for a while, you always have a new idea. To <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Nice seeing you. Thank you.